hey, teaser for performative connection coming up on the <laughs> fourth from Brisbane. Because I'm certain that will be a large soapbox. All of us will hike on top of together and have beverages <laughs> and rant. So <laughs> we'll have lunch on that too. It'll be great. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We're here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience and both partnered in solo dancing. She has about 22 years and I'm about 24. And tonight we are going to be talking about Ass Jam first. <laughs> All-Star <laughs> Swing Jam for talking. those of you not in the know. <laughs> we're going to be talking about Bamio version 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Bamio version 2. I love it. Ben Morris and Cameo McHenry. Yeah. Don't get too confused. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had the privilege of going to All-Star Swing Jam um, in the Bay Area this past weekend. Had a lovely time. And the first thing that I wanted to say is to all of you who like approached us to be like, hey, I love nerdy. Just thank you so much. And just being so kind. And one of you said hi by going, and that made my flipping day. So just um, you all mean so much to us. And that's why we do this. So thank you so much from the bottom of our, of our hearts for your support. And um Please help spread the word because it would be nice to be monetized on YouTube, but we need to have a thousand YouTube subscribers for that. So we're close. Go, go forth and disseminate the nerdiness, my dear flying monkeys. <laughs> Fly, my pretties. <laughs> <laughs> We had a great time. Thanks to everyone we got to dance with and mm -hmm. hope to see you all again soon. Yeah. And <laughs> all of you who tolerated my wobbly, wobbly, broken knees. Thank you. <laughs> Dancing <laughs> injured is not fun. <laughs> no, <it's> not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then uh, one last uh, order of business before we get to tonight's topic. Um, one of our uh, nerdy peoples. I don't know. We need like a name for our people. One of our nerds, one of our nerds <laughs> uh, runs a amazing private lesson fund. Um, and so it's uh, available to anyone living inside the United States. The private lesson fund awards $100 each month to a new applicant for a private lesson. Uh, the private lesson fund was created to make private lessons more accessible to dancers who may not be able to swing the cost of one. I like that pun. I see you so nerdy. The fund has a very easy application process and the award is open to anyone living in the USA. You can visit privatelessonfund.com for more eligibility information and to apply. So highly recommend that because a lot of us want to get better, but we just don't have the financial means to. So that's a, an amazing, amazing resource yeah. uh, to know that exists. Uh, our next live episode, we're having Robert Royston as our guest host. And we are talking about performative connection yeah fingers crossed because like he confirmed but then he's been a little mia since then so we will i will pester i will i will feel awkward on everyone's behalf and i will be like <laughs> sir we confirmed this once can we confirm this again <laughs> <laughs> in theory our next live should be with Royston and it'll be very fun yeah and it'll be on Monday April 4th at 6 p.m pacific because that's what works with his schedule so before one is it a different day and time weird time but it's on the Facebook event <laughs> I will put the Facebook event link in the description box below for you youtubers tonight we are analyzing Ben Morris and Cameo McHenry from Monterey apparently yes. that's how I'm saying Monterey tonight I apologize <laughs> The link is in the chat. Go ahead and give the video a watch when you're done. Get to analyzing. It's so good. It goes by fast, which is like a good sign, but you're like, oh, that's over. I know. <laughs> I wanted more. <laughs> All right, cool. To the screen share. Do -do -do -do. So um, we don't have a particular topic for tonight. We're just framing this through this dance and talking about stuff as we go. So for those of you who are here live, if you have questions as we go, feel free to drop them in the chat. I love the beginning of this dance because they look like birds. <laughs> when you're not quite sure what the song is yet 
I know. I've already listened to this new Adele album so many times. Yeah. It's it's yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this opening because they're not it's not anything too complicated, but it's fun. It is. It's very fun. And then I don't know where, where the T-Rex hands come from. And then the beat drops and they're like, okay, 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 it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which this is a kind of like mid-tempo song. Mm -hmm. um, so in general, they keep it pretty chill. Um, I mean, it's a little bit more energy than what I would you know expect from like a slow song um, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's about the right energy for the speed of the song and I just wanted to mention that because it is important <laughs> yeah and like they they took a long time to get to like this is going to be the send out right mm -hmm. and we're almost a quarter of the way into the video already <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um while I understand at the lower levels you may not have the luxury of yeah. taking that long to get to your swing content um it's still Not something <laughs> yeah don't like <laughs> we harp on this like every single darn episode but i am not going to stop until everybody gets the memo <laughs> less is more at the beginning especially like to get on the same page as your partner is is so so important mm -hmm. yeah and also not just for like a competitive dance like mm -hmm. any dance don't right don't need to rush in. right <laughs> it's <laughs> like <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a conversational equivalent because it's bet it's better than small talk. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like um, two really close friends or family seeing each other and having like, "Hey, how are you? Yeah, how are you, how are you doing? Yeah, much more like compassionate and a little bit more intimate. That's the beginning of the dance. You don't just blast through that. You're like, I heard you were in a car wreck last Saturday. How you doing? <laughs> Great example. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> All right. I'd love it if you uh, talked a little bit about this lovely um, choice that Cameo makes here. Yeah. So she does this really nice shaping, um, which Ben does allow her to get into because he isn't moving her past that foot that she plants onto. Mm -hmm. But you can really see she kind of like plants the foot and then reaches and kind of counters herself with the upper body. So she's reaching with that left foot, she's countering um, to her right with the upper body. So she's pretty balanced. Like she is giving him some connection in the waist, but not too much. She really does have the majority of her own weight. Um, she's giving him some connection. You can kind of see she starts out on a leg that's a little bit less bent and as she kind of sinks into it that's where we're getting the connection piece so like right here like his arm is on her torso but i wouldn't say that there's like a ton of connection because no. they're moving in the same direction um so it, it there's connection obviously but she kind of increases it as she like uh, bends down into that knee and that also kind of keeps the connection with his like forearm because she's kind of rolling down it as she's turning mm -hmm. and so her kind of sinking keeps that connection it gives a little bit of extra weight not too much But it's it's a really nice shape um and she really complements it with the arm that free arm so she because of where ben is at in relation to her she doesn't want to like extend the arm fully but she still has some like direction with the elbow right so it's not like just there like she's very intentionally dragging the elbow around with her as she's rotating the upper body 
And so we're just kind of moving it as one piece. It's kind of like a like a corkscrew feeling almost. Mm -hmm. And she also um, leaves that right foot planted. She so it rotates towards the audience, and then she kind of leaves it there as she rotates even further. Right. So it starts out kind of facing um, like the side, and then it slightly turns towards the audience as she moves from facing to the side, facing the front. Um, and as she does that, she kind of like loosens up the weight on the heel. So she, because she's leaning forward, her weight's going more into like the toes, like the ball of the foot. Um, so that allows her to rotate that foot forward and then she leaves it there as she continues through. So before we move on, I just want to talk a little bit about what Ben is doing to facilitate this because the main clear um, piece of communication he's giving is by having this shape um, and really stretching the left side of his body. Mm -hmm. He's really encouraging Cameo to stay on the, the, the forward end of the slot in front of him instead of catching up to him or passing him. And so um, it's her rotation initiates in front of him, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then from there, he is then um, responding to her choices that Alicia was just describing. Um, but again, you can see how he's still really stretching this side of his body so he can keep the handhold comfortable for the choice that she then made. Mm -hmm. And then if we pay attention to his arm, it's like very much a, a guardrail. Mm -hmm. So like the, the connection that Alicia was talking about, it, it's not huge but it is increasing over time. And what it's allowing Ben to uh, not necessarily do, but to know is when her, her weight starts shifting off of this foot so he can then facilitate it. Yeah. So it's a really excellent example of the kind of order of operations that I talk about a lot where like leader leads pattern A, follow, takes that lead and decides to do their own thing with it. So they'd end up doing pattern B. And then the leader then responds and leads from pattern B, not their original pattern A that they intended. They're, they're, they're leading from a, this is reality. So I will lead here instead of whatever the opposite of reality is, because my brain cannot pull that Fancy. word out of my head. Fancy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I also want to mention quickly that they are really, um, that shape that they create is pretty equal on both sides. All right, so they kind of mirror that same, like, arcing of the upper body, both of them. Mm. Yeah. Another thing I want to mention is that, um, like, settling that Cameo does out of this it's so pretty it is it's it's kind of it's a little different it's in an angle and she also is doing it with her feet together like she's not really doing a normal anchor of sorts so rather than like doing a triple and then settling into the hip what she's doing is she's planting she's like pretty right up above her feet and instead of moving the feet, she's leaving them there. And because Ben is really countering her, she's able to just like drop that hip kind of back and diagonally down almost in order to create that same settling effect. And because of the fact that she's like going into it um, with straight legs, basically, she does end up lifting up that right leg ever so slightly. Um, and it's just because that leg isn't going to bend that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or let me rephrase that. That leg shouldn't bend that way. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it's like, unless you've got my knees, it's part yeah. of the problem. <laughs> it should not bend that it way. should not. But because of the, um, she's moving towards that left side, the left leg is fine staying in that kind of straightened position. Mm-hmm. 
because it's moving towards the outside, not towards the inside. Yeah. And like uh, Alicia stated, this is only possible on her end because of the counterbalance that Ben is providing. So they have a really strong center counterpoint. So that mm. essentially means the handhold is not tra traveling towards or away from either partner. It's more or less staying in place. And both partners are just moving away from that center counterpoint that isn't going anywhere. Mm. And so you can really see how Ben is really moving away from that handhold which is giving Cameo the counterbalance she needs to feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that is can be so frustrating as a follow is, especially in competitions, you need to give the look as if you're anchoring in a connected way, but your partner isn't providing the, the context in which to do that. So, uh, hey, teaser for performative connection coming up in <laughs> from person. Because I'm certain that will be a large soapbox. All of us will hike on top of together and have beverages <laughs> and rant. So <laughs> we'll have lunch on that too. It'll be great. <laughs> or dinner, I guess, since it's later. Or dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a really interesting um, choice that Cameo makes there. And I want to talk about it briefly because what she's doing with her lower body is different than we might normally see just the way that she is kind of straightening into those legs. Um, usually you would want to kind of soften into it forward, right? So then you get that like soft compression into the hand as well but because of the way she's doing this it she kind of hits this like hard wall um but and she's, the energy goes down right and she's kind of letting her arm move a little bit separately from her body so she's kind of moving the rest of her body separately from what ben is doing with her arm yeah. And it is partially because of the way that she's styling this. Um, yeah. It just kind of disconnects it naturally the way that mm -hmm. it's going, it, that it's happening um, because of that straightening the leg. It just kind of, you hit this wall where you can't really sink into anything anymore. <laughs> and right. so she just, instead of like staying there awkwardly, she just kind of starts rotating out of it with her lower body and then lets her arm follow. Mm -hmm. another excellent example of like leader leads a followed as b yeah leader then responds to b yeah because i would say that she's really initiating the turn out of that yeah um, i would because agree of the way she's kind of rebounding almost out of that like really strong um boundary point mm -hmm. and then the arms are following so she's leading at this moment not yep, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I just want to highlight the the technique of Ben's sugar tuck. So we yeah. were just talking about the the center counterpoint, and I want to show the basically the arc it does. It basically comes towards him a little bit and then arcs up. It doesn't even go as far as my arrow <laughs> indicated. It's more up. Than towards him yeah. and that is so important because it allows the follow to actually catch up to that handhold and to arrive at compression yeah. um like i can't tell you how many times i've been following and i can't get there i am six feet tall and i can't get there this is a problem <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one thing i want to mention is because cameo has this really like sharp hit into that uh, sugar tuck of sorts um, she then out the other end kind of does the exact opposite and really softens into the knees and really relaxes into the connection so she kind of has this like um equal opposite almost yeah which is a really important detail to actually highlight that mm -hmm. that play that she did right if otherwise the play would be meaningless Right. And if she were to continue that like sharp angle that she was using, it would start to look really stiff and awkward um, and not like an intentional choice that she made. Ooh, I want to talk about the, again, path of the connected handhold for this yep. pattern. So um, it starts by crossing the slot 
maybe like half of a floorboard in order to um, get Cameo to step more in front and across herself, more like balance beam kind of situation, which helps prep her open to her left for rotation. So that's the first thing that's happening. The handhold isn't just coming towards Ben, it's also shifting to his right, her left, or so slightly. Then it comes towards him, but again, only a little bit so she can run into it and he switches handholds. And then he rotates the handhold. And this is one of those moments where from a bird's eye view, depending on how you've set it up and how the follow connects into it, the arc of the handhold is going to be slightly different. And um, the main thing that may be helpful to picture in your minds is the hand is attached to the follow's arm, which is attached to the follow's shoulder. And you are just trying to get a normal whip out of your follow, essentially, for the first half of this pattern. <laughs> so you need to allow for the follow's rotation because the arm is going to stay in front of their body and they're going to rotate. So that means the hand hold is going to go kind of back in the direction it came from just a little bit. And then for the follow's right shoulder to get behind the leader's right shoulder, the hand hold has to come towards the camera a little bit. So from a bird's eye view, oh, can I draw this? This is complicated from the bird's eye view. Okay, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we have a slot. <laughs> so uh, hand hold started more over here. This is exaggeration for demonstration purposes. Don't take this too literally. It is very much exaggerated. Um, it went this way first a little bit to get Cameo to, to prep onto her right foot. Then it went towards Ben ever so slightly. And then it did one of these. <laughs> so conch shell. Yeah. There's, there's probably some Fibonacci math in here somewhere, but um, probably. Yeah. besides saying the word Fibonacci, I'm not going any further. <laughs> Do you want to like mention where Ben's body is in this like bird? Oh, eye? yes, yes, yes. Because <laughs> we were just talking about the handhold. Yeah. He's skipping ahead, but I mean, we're there now, so it's fine. <laughs> um, so it's really important that as a uh, leader, your body is trading places a tiny bit uh, with the follow, because if you don't travel at all, the follow is never going to get to the end of the slot. And you're really wanting to hit tension like right after you transition out of compression. Because like when he is switching to his right to right, right here, there's going to be compression in that handhold. And as he pushes it forward, because Cameo is moving past him, it's transitioning into tension like pretty much instantly. So what you can see is when the handhold is coming back in the direction it came, Ben is also stepping in that direction too. And that's to allow him to prep himself. And that's usually how he gets um, his pretty, the thing he does all the time, his one foot rotations where he lets go of the follow. That's when he preps himself to do that. Um, but this time he's just uh, maintaining connection for an open whip. Mm -hmm. And as the handhold is coming across his body open to his right so that Cameo can finish her first triple, um, he's resisting that rotation in his right shoulder. Mm -hmm. He's not pushing into that. He's resisting into that. And that is a very, 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 very important distinction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also this, oh, sorry. wanted to point out like how much he's stretching that right side of his body. Yeah. Like it's not just coming from the shoulder area or the upper body. It's like that full right side of his body is creating this arc. Yeah. I was going to get to that next because there are different variations to exit that same entrance. And one is just simply bop it over the head and beat mm -hmm. it out. But he's wanting to create some exaggeration out of it. And that's where the stretching of the side of his body comes in because it's encouraging Cameo to collect in and up. So mm -hmm. that way 
when she steps forward and down onto this foot, she's coming down onto that foot, um, which will create a different effect than if she were just driving forward on that foot. Because yeah. it would be possible to go directly to a one foot spin from that count four, if you so chose. Yeah. All right, this is where we innocently plug our very, very popular one foot spins episode. <laughs> yeah that's very popular our most popular episode we try not to think about how many times it's been seen yeah so this is a fan kick right here and it kind of rainbows up and around and she's allowing the leg to go with the arm so that she is timing that correctly to go into that one foot And also that's just how a fan kick is done. Um, fan kicks are generally um, like a solo movement thing. And you generally take the right arm and go along with the right leg as it's coming up and over. So she's letting that happen with the connected hand as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then because those are coordinated together, she's able to kind of place at the same point and she's pretty well balanced going into this. Yeah. I love Ben's doing an excellent job of um, staying close enough to her because mm -hmm. he, he wants to make sure that he's not completely like pulling her hand back over behind her head. So he crosses the slot a little bit to like trade places uh, perpendicular to the slot with her. And then I love how he just uses his left hand for some extra stability on her forearm going into mm -hmm. this prep. Yeah. Because that's a prolonged period of time to put strain on just the handhold itself, because that mm -hmm. uses a lot um, of the smaller muscles in the arm and shoulder. Yeah. So that extra bit of support to kind of actually allow the follow to use some larger muscles to create some tension can be a nice relief <laughs> after a sequence like that. Yeah. So as you can see, her coming in, or in and out of the fan kick, her standing leg, her heel lifts up off the ground a little bit because when you do these fan kicks, the thought is kind of up and over. And so she has that like up and over. She's really thinking of going up. And then as she drops into the one foot, she really softens the knee and like makes sure to drop back down instead of staying up. If you stay up, that's more of like a... um ballet type of assisted turn um mm -hmm. where you're kind of up on the toe and it looks more stiff which is not our goal generally um right. so just wanted to mention she does come up but then she makes sure to soften back down and that heel is even you know touching the floor not weighted but touching the floor mm -hmm. And then I just love this choice right here to start traveling yeah. the partnership um, because they had just done so much in place. And because mm -hmm. this is a spotlight, um, the higher the level you are, the more important it is to use more and more of the floor. Um, and it's just a really simple way <laughs> to like, just move, move, just move a little bit. Not too much. <laughs> Yeah, that's something uh, we noticed um, at All Star Swing Jam. How, because like every single final was spotlighted, right? Yeah. And which I like, I like it when events do that, especially when they're smaller. So it's like yeah. it's safer for you to experience your first spotlight if it is your yeah. first one or just one of your first ones. But we see um, the skill of floor craft for a spotlight is a distinct skill. And um, there aren't many places to learn that besides just trying to copy what you see. So if you're at the point in your competitive dancing where spotlights are a part of your reality, whoever you train with, I, I suggest having a discreet yeah. conversation about yeah. that because um, A, you need to learn the skills of the patterns that travel. Mm -hmm. um, and B, you need to decide what fits with your aesthetic as an individual. Um, yeah. And this is aimed mainly at leaders, but also as a follow, like how, 
do you want to be following those kinds of patterns? Something to consider. Yeah. Or is there a time when as a follow, you could add the information? It's like, okay, we can stop traveling now. <laughs> that would be great because I'm about to kick someone in the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, separate PSA. Um, when you are starting your dances, your spotlights, make sure that your closed off arm is not towards the audience. <laughs> yep. So notice here at the beginning, the, the open off arm side not towards is, the audience. Yeah, yeah. The closed off side is is towards the not audience. And the open side is towards the audience. This is very important information. Yeah, I will say generally these spotlights are set up for Jack and Jill's where leads are, if you're looking at it, leads are on the left, follows are on the right. And that is generally the opposite side you need to start on. Yes. <laughs> we gotta rotate. Yes. It's a trick. I feel like they do that on purpose because like you just <laughs> solved the problem if you moved the chairs, but then everybody would get off the hook. Yep. <laughs> I bet some I leaders would doing. still like switch it and be like, no, this feels wrong. Do the other way. I'm like, no, no, the whole point was to fix you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not salty at all. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so um, another piece of contrast, um, uh, for this. So they had been doing a lot of stationary things and now they're, they're traveling partnership. Another distinction to be made is before they were doing really circular things and now they're doing linear things. So there are two types of contrast that are happening here. Um, and that second one is really important because as a follow, all you're doing is spinning. You kind of want to stop spinning at some point. I don't care how much you enjoy spinning or turning as a follow. I don't care. There will come a time where you're like, okay, I've had enough. Key things. Yeah. If like you get to a point in the dance where you just feel like you've been doing the exact same thing for the whole dance, you should probably try doing something different. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I want to highlight here um, how Ben is reaching for Cameo's upper back and armpit area. Yeah. Um, but then he's really not doing anything. He's not like high eyeing at all. Like you can mm -hmm. see right here, once his hand and arm is in this position, it just stays there and she reacts to it. And it only moves, like this hand only moved suddenly right there because her shoulder moved. Right. Not the other way around. So he, his hand was following her shoulder at that point because she had plenty of information. Yeah. yeah. Follows no when there's a forearm on the back of our neck. <laughs> yep. We know. <laughs> and we don't like being clotheslined generally. Yeah, no. Been there, done that. It's not fun. Anyways. Yep. <laughs> I love how simple this moment is and how powerful it yeah. is. This is an example of um, how even though you may quote unquote turn the volume down on something because that that turn that she just did was very ninja-like. Mm -hmm. But coming out of it, literally just standing up out of it slowly with confidence yeah. is so powerful. She did not need to escalate from what she just did. Yeah. And she also not only like just stands up out of it, but she like shapes it at the end to be mm -hmm. something very like, yeah, I did that, like some mm -hmm. attitude into it, you know, um, if she were to just stand up and not do that, it'd look a little awkward. Right. So <laughs> she finishes the movement, um, with something intentional. Yeah. And then Ben scrolls away. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh... I don't know. I feel you like you have to do a lot of scrolling this past week. <laughs> May um, oh, you mean on my busted knees? Yes, yes, I did. I did. I did. I had a lot. There was a lot, and it was all unnecessary. Uh, yeah. So, um, it's a really important skill as a leader to learn when you, it's your job to reestablish tension at the end of a pattern. And mm -hmm. uh, a really simple rule of thumb is if the follow just did something intense. Don't make them then move away from you. Yeah. <laughs> Let them stay there. You move away. <laughs> so intense can be like uh, an extra acrobatic rotation like we had with Cameo right here. Or just like there were a lot of rotations. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like um, 
if they're their stationary rotations. If the follow is not traveling through their rotations, it then feels more often than not really arbitrary and awkward and not helpful to then suddenly have to travel again. Yeah. Because you were just the stationary partner. So um, the art of leader scrolling. Call out to everyone teaching at events everywhere. Someone <laughs> teach that workshop. <laughs> I love how he does this little, just like really slight uh, body roll to be like, yeah, that was yeah. an amazing cameo. Well done. <laughs> and as an extension of that concept, here's Ben again, taking the responsibility of doing more traveling. Mm -hmm. So um, she continues to have a bit of a break. It's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this is, I think I lead a variation of this pattern, um, but this is one of those where it's just really important to be mindful of the handhold, this one in particular. So that way, as you're coming through and prepping the follow, you are not um, yanking their wrist or twisting their wrist in an awkward way. Yeah. So you can see how much Ben is rotating his wrist so his thumb's more down. So that way Cameo can have a more normal frame in this moment mm -hmm. so she can connect properly. So Ben's the one in the awkward position, not her. And then uh, uh, I have another soapbox. We <laughs> so <Tracking>. um, <laughs> so many. Um, I want to highlight. So first of all, we're gonna look at the, the way that Cameo is following the prep for this turn. So her right foot plants, and then as she steps forward and through onto her left foot, she's very much rotated to her right, and she's in this nice open shape with her frame, right? Because that's what is then going to close and allow for the rotation. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to the point here where... Um, the foot is planted and we look at this frame again so it's more more closed elbows are more bent it doesn't help that the camera is also moving one of these days camera person be stationary for the prep for an inside roll please this would be great um, <laughs> but the amount of traveling ben is doing from this moment to this moment is a lot which is allowing, and you can see, you can see his feet. <laughs> He's like booking it, which is allowing um, his connection, his lead to actually prep her into that position, drawing her left hand and therefore her left side forward down the slot and across um, in front of her right foot. Um, the taller a follow you have, the longer their arms, the more you have to travel as a leader in the same amount of time. So if Ben were to do this same size prep with me, it wouldn't be enough. Sorry, I know where this sub box is coming from. <laughs> I know. I just, it's such a struggle. So I think the camera will be visible in the, um, in the video, but basically what I have, like, I, I'm six feet tall. I've got like very long wingspan. I just, I'm all leg. <laughs> I'm not like Bryn who's all torso. <laughs> Like there's lots, there's lots of leg on me and I'll get this like, and they'll, they'll think here I'm prepped and I'm like, I'm not even opened up yet. Like prep, take, take me somewhere. And they expect me during the fast song of prelim to be able to then rotate at speed. Now that's not, that's not what happens. So like if we use them, yeah, so this is a very basic idea. So let's say with Cameo, Ben is only having to cover this much distance with the handhold to prep her. Like granted, I know Cameo is more like medium height and wingspan. Um, so like here, we'll, we'll do Sarah. Sarah's like <laughs> right here. And then you got, you got me, which, God, it's annoying. <laughs> gotta do that so like the distance the hand travels from one to two for a prep for this kind of turn and this happens for preps for everything the distance the hand travels is often larger the larger the follow but you still have to cover that same distance in the same amount of time mm -hmm. 
these distances are all covered in one count. So when you're doing when you're doing this with a someone with more wingspan or is taller, has a broader frame, you have to cover more distance in the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to add in. I think please do get me on, off the soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm add gonna in to stop the soapbox. Me. But <laughs> I think the thing to focus on is not so much like I, I want to be careful the way that I say this because I'm not trying to like veto all that you just said because it's it's relevant. But like right. when you're in the moment, I think it can be more helpful to think about what the follow is doing and getting the follow to do certain things rather than thinking, oh, I need to move my hand this much. Right. That's why I focused on watching cameo first before I talked about what I was doing. Because you're trying to create the correct prepped shape out of your follow. Mm -hmm. And the distance your hand travels is based on that and that alone. Yep. Um, And this will, it will also change depending on, because if your follow is more forward weighted, that will also increase the distance the hand has to travel. If a follow is more back weighted, that will decrease the distance the hand has to travel. And so that plus the actual size of your follow's body will compound to create the ideal sized prep. But ultimately you're just trying to create that shape out of your follow so that Mm -hmm. they are actually prepped in their body to turn, hence the word prep. Yeah. So I think basically what we're saying is like, you need to understand what's creating the differences here and understand that, you know, when you have larger people, you need to be moving more. But like in that moment, I think you really should be focusing on getting the correct shape that you want from the follow, not so much thinking, oh, I need to move it from here to here. Yeah. Because everyone's different. So I'm going to turn off the drawing here because cameo is gorgeous in this moment like this is more or less what you're aiming for with every follow for Mm -hmm. this particular pattern count two of an inside turn um that's an open uh a free turn Mm -hmm. so yeah if if the follows left arm is still in front of their body instead of to the side of their body and if they were iron man if their light is facing you Mm -hmm. (laughs) you have not prepped them enough (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully you all understand that reference. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'll probably put gifts into the recording. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Iron Man light faces the audience on. Do not later. Okay. And then we did a whole episode on telemarks. I'll mm-hmm. link that somewhere. Because <laughs> if we I... stop and talk about a telemark now, we will be here another hour. Yes, but I, I do want to know what Cameo does with her free arm. Okay. So when we go into this telemark, Ben pulls her in pretty close. And so because of that, she ends up with that left arm kind of draped over herself because that's giving like the least amount of extra like limbs <laughs> to mm-hmm. move around. Um, and it's also a really nice um, like styling. It looks visually pleasing because mm-hmm. of the like drape of it. Yeah. So if you get into that situation where like as a follow, like if your lead gets really close to you, that's the type of thing you want to go for, like kind of draping across yourself. Mm -hmm. More so than like awkwardly having it shoved up towards you. Yeah. If you have to do like this huge shrug to get it up and over the leader's arm, just, just don't. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't look nice. It doesn't look nice. nice. It doesn't feel good. It's just not worth it. Um, And then, oh, this is another adjusting to your partner thing. So uh, Ben wraps his arm around Cameo's waist. Um, First of all, they know each other. So I assume that's a consensual thing. Just maybe don't put your hand on a follow's waist if you're not friends enough for that. That's just a personal thing. Um, but the other thing is if a follow has a more hourglass body where the waist is significantly narrower than the shoulders, if you apply force to that, there's nothing, this is there's nothing here. So 
the waste wants to go that way. So you end up with this kind of thing and the spine is bent and it re requires like a lot of strength on the follows part to keep an erect spine through that. So um, I know this, this happened to me in, in my prelims and I had to escape it several times because like I just, my, my shoulder just like had no room and it was pulling my spine in. And I was like, I'm just gonna run away from this. <laughs> so <laughs> always a just, good option. <laughs> just, just something to keep in mind. Cause like uh, um, Cameo is, is less hourglass shaped than myself or other follows. And like that affects the connection. It's like really important. And also the taller a person is, the more distance there is from the bottom of the ribs and the top of the pelvis which is a lot more room with less structural support protecting the spine. And it's just important to not be applying a lot of connection to those areas anyways. So yeah. like you, you want, you want to be aiming for structural support, it's like ribs, shoulders, hips, not the nebulous area where your organs are just like, I'm way too close to the skin. There's Didn't nothing. Austin protecting say, me. like avoid the squishy bits or something. Yes, like he did. <laughs> Uh, that. <laughs> that's what we mean we're not talking about like subcutaneous fat although like some follows may also like feel uncomfortable with that being touched I'm just like I want my spine to be protected <laughs> thanks or that one time I got chudo chopped in the liver that was great <sighs> fun times <laughs> it, was in a, it was in a workshop in the before times and it was like an accelerated like something into a like a dead sure. stop. And my yeah. leader decided to just like side of hand, like blade right into <laughs> the squishy bits. So there was no bone. And so I am shocked I didn't get a bruise because there was, there was a lot. <laughs> but you can see really clearly right here that there is, there is space in between them. He isn't pulling her waist so close to him that she's having to curve her spine to compensate. So that's, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. 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 So this is kind of like a different connection because of the, like, like shaping the end in towards each other. So she kind of has this like upwards connection of like a little bit up further past his elbow and he has her upper arm. Um, neither of these are like super frequent connection points that you necessarily see um, so they kind of have to work with this in order to make sure that they're staying connected and be able to prep this turn that they go into mm -hmm. so because we're hanging out here cameo's hand kind of like drops a little bit more towards his elbow and so what happens is she's the one that kind of creates that compression in order for her to turn herself. Mm -hmm. um, ben can't necessarily do too much of that because of the way that his hand is up on top of her, like more facing out. Um, yeah, he can draw her left side forward, but the rest right her. Exactly. So she's kind of having to do the majority of this prepping. And so she is rotating herself open really compressing into that uh, left hand of hers and adding in that free arm to kind of whip herself around because also the way like the the way that she's doing this and like the place that she's putting that pressure it's a little bit vulnerable because it's kind of right on that elbow and mm -hmm. if you put too much pressure in on that depending on the person it could kind of like hyperextend the elbow a little bit you don't yeah. want that so she's kind of doing two things in order to create the momentum she needs to get that turn one is getting a little compression on that arm with the left hand the other is coming from that prep of the right hand mm -hmm. so and then afterwards ben is doing a really lovely job of keeping pace with her so the mm -hmm. distance between them stays the same she's not suddenly getting really close to him um so that way she feels safe continuing to travel and turn towards him mm -hmm. um so, it's like 
one of my things, like when you spot towards a leader, they're like, yeah, spin towards me. And every time you spot, I'm like, you're getting comfortably close. You know what that reminds me of? <laughs> <laughs> that one thing that uh, I was explaining to you where my lead wrapped both of my hands behind my back. and Yes, around me. that was so bizarre. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Don't do it. Um, for those of you here, I'll maybe show you afterwards because it, it, it sounds as very confusing and it is confusing. I know. I remember when you first verbally was like, this is yeah. the thing that happened. And I'm like, what? And then I rewatched yeah. the video. I'm like, oh my God, that is how. Yeah. <laughs> you can't picture it. It does not sound like it makes sense, but it happened. Anywho. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That ran over. <laughs> Definitely join us for Row Row on April 4th, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And yes, that is a Monday. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what we got. It, your Monday will be better. Your, your back to the work week will be better for it. Uh, so yeah, really like beyond excited for that. And also this weekend, I believe on Sunday, we're doing our uh, second What Went Wrong workshop. So we're going to be watching another uh, champion level dance uh, that has some snafus in it and actually breaking mm -hmm. down what went wrong and why. Um, yep. Because no matter how amazing of a dancer you become, shit still happens sometimes. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> that, that is, that's just what happens with improvised partner dancing. Tis inevitable. Mm -hmm. Anyways, well, thank you all so much for joining us. And again, thank you to everyone at All Star Swing Jam that came up to us. It means the world. So thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right, cool. To the screen share. I felt significantly more self conscious about that now that people greet me that way. <laughs> It totally like went over my head when he did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I think I had just walked into the ballroom. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, what? <laughs> oh my and then God. you mentioned it and I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, that is a very efficient way to greet me in particular. Yeah. 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 Yes. Someday there should be merch with doodly doo on it jazz hands <laughs> and if anybody is artistically inclined and wants to do some fan art <laughs> for some reason that reminded me of the glorious austin Coyce quote from all star swing Jam. should i share yeah. it should you i maybe share it i'm gonna where to, where to go okay so um uh alicia and i audited a few of the, the workshops at all star swing Jam because we love just seeing what other teachers listening. are teaching and how and how they teach and listening because we're yeah. nerds it's in the brand name yeah um, i mean it also helps us know what you guys are being taught as well so yeah so we can be better <laughs> at our jobs yeah um and uh austin Coyce and hannah gutman taught together first of all they're right. a, a stinking <laughs> delight them together Mwah. um so funny <laughs> but at one point austin was teaching about the fact that eye contact is a meaningful form of communication. Um, and that essentially, if you are making eye contact 100% of the time, aka staring at your partner, the eye contact is no longer a form of communication. But this is the, the sentence that came out of his mouth and it was just beautiful. If I'm always staring at her, it doesn't mean anything. It's weird. Austin Coyce, love you, sir. I love, I love fellow Westie nerds. Yeah. They're the best. <laughs>